Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be answering a question from you guys online. This is from a guy called Keaton from Toronto. Um, he's 36 and he says he's been learning Hejo over the last couple of days from one of my videos. And he says when he's been trying the single string picking videos, um, he's having real trouble with his picking hand in particular. The finger's doing what he's wanting to do on the chord hand side, but the single string picking lacks coordination and he's really struggling with that and he says I'm holding my pick right um, I like the lead guitar best and I'm a very coordinated athletic guy so this confuses me which I feel is important to add because you know a lot of people feel oh this is just me sometimes I must just really struggle with this absolutely anyone can struggle when you don't know the right sort of things to do so um to help you out keaton we're going to do a bit of a close-up on my picking hand to see how i would have you do it but first of all i just want to give you a general point about single string picking versus strumming so when you're strumming it wants to be a strumming action from at the elbow you're very much moving uh, your forearm from your elbow sitting in the guitar as close to your body as you can. When you're picking single strings or even a pair of strings, it actually wants to be a wrist motion, not a strumming motion. The way I like to think about it is comparing how you would paint a big canvas of a background of a picture compared to how you would write your name or write nice and neat. You need to rest your hand or rest your wrist nice to be able to write nice and neat, right? And we want to rest our wrist on the guitar itself to get best results when single string picking. I'll show you exactly how to do that now uh, in a close-up. Okay, guys, just to demonstrate, when we're strumming, it's a movement from the elbow and we're trying to keep our wrist as close to the guitar as we reasonably can um, without it sort of touching the guitar. So if I'm strumming just an E major chord, I've kept my wrist still and I've moved from the elbow. Um, you don't want to tense your wrist at all. I compare it to standing up straight. It doesn't take any more muscles to do it, but you need to hold it in place. So hold your wrist in place to keep it as close to the guitar as possible. If this is happening, this is sort of what a lot of beginners can do with their wrist when they're strumming. It needs to be held right into the guitar, which prepares you for when you're playing single notes which if I'm picking the thickest E string, it is very much a wrist motion. So we wanna rest our hands on sort of the lower part of your thumb, where your thumb meets your, meets your palm here. And we rest all the forearm on your guitar, and this will be the same for electric or acoustic guitar. And it's a wrist motion. Remember, compare it to writing your name nice and neat you would always rest your wrist. And strumming covers a larger area like painting a big canvas. When we want to play the thinner strings, which is where many beginners riffs can start, it's either the thicker or the thinner ones, um, we can actually still rest our thumb or the palm of our hand on the strings themselves and then pick the thinner ones. That's the best way to do it. What I, again, what I see a lot of people doing is resting their little finger um, to be able to play the thinner strings. If you've gone for a C major scale lesson, you may have started doing it like that because it's a big temptation, but we can't do that if you want to reach up to the thickest E string. So the thing that's going to work for all six strings, whenever you want to play any of them and actually help you play, is going to be doing this. Rhythm guitarists, so the strummers amongst you, may want to rest your hand sort of on the bridge at this area and sort of rest down like this. Keep right on the, on the outside of your hand. You can get away with that for a really long time. And then at some point, the fact that your picking hand is sort of in its resting point so far away from the strings may become a problem, but that's not going to become a problem for a very long time and you can coach your way out of it, getting it back. But the best way to do it from the start, typically, is by doing it this way, by resting on your thumb. And then when you go from one string to the next, what we can do is rest your thumb on that string. Now let me show you what I mean. 
So when I pick the thickest E string, no problemo, my thumb, sort of the palm of my hand is rested on the guitar at the thumb side and I've sort of lifted my hand slightly this way. When I pick the A string straight after it, what I want to do is stop the E string that I've just come off from ringing out. So I've picked this one, then I pick this one and I want this one to stop ringing out so that it doesn't sound messy. What I do is I dab that string, string six with my thumb and then play the next one down and then I can play six to five and only one string rings out. When I go six to five without, they're both ringing out and whatever riff I'm playing may, or melody may sound messy. Um, when we keep going down, the same thing just happens. You just want to touch the string you've just come off with your thumb and go down as follows. Um, you want to try and make sure there is no gap there as much as possible. So you want to you want to try and make sure there's no silence between between each one. But um, that's the way it's done for going down. When you're coming back up, what we want to do is is dab it with um, sort of your middle finger, your third finger. Lay them down like this after you've played, but only we're only doing this as a as sort of a tap of the string, and that's enough. I'm very much resting sort of out here, ready to pick the next string. But when I'm coming back, compare that to. And you can see how that can really neaten up all your single string playing. When you're hitting a pair of strings, for example, for a lead guitar part, or for a rhythm part, for a power chord, a pair of strings should be seen as the same as when you're picking a single one, you're just going a little bit further. still resting my hand here typically, though I'm not pressing down on it or leaning down on it too much. We're just holding it in place as an anchor point and very much stopping this idea, which is going to hamper you. It's going to stop your hand moving an awful lot. Um, going back to the resting on the outside, as I say, this, this sort of all becomes very tempting to rest on the outside of your hand rather than on the picking hand side for single string strums. Though I did go and see Niall Rogers recently, and when he was playing everything, he was very much lent on the outside of his hand. But he has a certain more strumming style, which isn't, you know, he's not shredding solos as such, Niall Rog Rogers. He's a... He's a strummer, so if he leans on the outside of his hand, that's totally fine. If you want him to play melodies, It's probably better to rest on this side for most things.